everybody! So today I thought we would do another little request. We've had several requests, in fact, for hair clips. And I wear a lot of these in my hair, as I'm sure you've noticed if you've watched a bunch of our videos. I like whole sorts of hair clips, hair barrettes, pretty things, sparkly things, things covered in buttons, things covered in beads. Well, anyway, I make a lot of these, and today I thought we would do a really simple one to start. And it's not only a cute, quick project, it's also a cool fashion hack, and this is why. You need a little bit of crochet cotton. Cotton's probably the best thing for this project because it washes well, and if you have to um, wash it because you get some stuff in your hair and it gets on your hair clip, you can wash it, so that's not a big deal. It typically keeps its color really well. Um, and you can put some beads on it if you want. You can dress them up as however you like. But the only thing you need for your hair is a bobby pin, and these are grabbable anywhere. You probably have a half dozen of them lying around in the couch. <laughs> uh, but you can get sacks of these at the dollar store for next to nothing. And this is all you need. You don't need expensive hair clips. You don't have to run off and buy something fancy in a um, in a craft store. All you need are some, some of these bobby pins. So you need crochet cotton, a little bit of needle and a thread, some bobby pins. If you like, you can grab some buttons and beads to make them all pretty and stuff. But that's it. That's what we're going to do today, so let's go to the craft table and grow ourselves some cute little hair flowers. <laughs> let's go! For our little flower barrette, you're going to need a couple colors of, I find the cotton crafter yarn works the best. I'm going to use um, a little bit of white and a little bit of pink for this one. You're going to need a bobby pin in order to sew the flower onto something. You're going to need a needle and thread. You're going to need scissors, a yarn needle, and today, I'm using a slightly smaller hook than I normally do. This is a 3.75 millimeter or an F5. It's just a little smaller. You're going to find that it's a little tighter when you're trying to make your stitches, but that's what's going to help keep this uh, a nice, tight, small little flower. So let's go. We're going to start with the center of the flower, and I'm making my center in white because I like white and pink, and I have a lot of white and pink outfits. So I'm going to start with a cinch circle and you make a loop however big you need it to be. Take your hook, go through the loop, grab the yarn and pull it up and before you let go, chain one. Into this cinch circle you're going to single crochet six. One, Three, four, five, and six. Cinch it shut by pulling on that short tail. Identify your first single crochet. Slip your hook into it. Grab your working yarn, so not the little tail and slip stitch to close off that row and snip your yarn. Take that working needle, or I should say take your thread, pull it through that little loop to tighten it up and that is the center of your flower. Now it's a good idea to weave in your ends a little bit. Um, I'm just going to pick up a couple of stitches and weave in each end maybe once or twice and then I'm just going to snip off all the excess because I really don't have to worry about this getting a whole lot of uh, pull because it's going to be a, sewn into something. So once you've tucked in your ends, just trim off your excess. There we go. And that is the center of your flower. Now we're going to make the petals. So you take your flower color and you make a slip knot. like that. Take the center of your flower and pick a stitch, doesn't matter which one, slip your hook into it, grab the working yarn and slip stitch through both to join your yarn to your center, just like that. Now for each petal you're going to work the following stitches into each stitch around your center. Chain one, Double crochet into the same stitch that you joined your yarn in. 
And remember what I said, this might be a little bit of a tight work because this is slightly bigger yarn than the hook I would normally use, but that's okay. Just take your time. So that's two double crochets, chain one, and slip stitch back into that same stitch. And that is one little petal. You're going to identify the next stitch along your center row. So there's the next one. And you're going to slip stitch into that. And you're going to repeat. Chain one, double crochet two times into that same stitch. chain one and slip stitch back into that same stitch and it will be a little tight so just be patient and that is two petals and you repeat identify the next stitch slip stitch into the next stitch chain one double crochet two times into that stitch Oops, looks like I picked up a little extra there. Try that again. Double crochet into that stitch. There we go. Double crochet once more. So it's chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and slip stitch all into each stitch around. And you're going to do that into the last three stitches so that you have a total of six petals. When you've finished your last petal, you're just going to snip your yarn and pull it back through that loop to fasten off. Give it a nice tight tug, pull it to the back, and weave it in. And there's the flower made. Now you're going to take your needle and thread, make sure you've got a nice little knot at the end, just like that. Take your flower, flip it upside down, and pick a petal somewhere in the middle of one of your petals, and just attach your thread by knotting it however you feel comfortable. Then take your bobby pin, and most bobby pins have are sort of have a flat bottom and a ridged top, and it's the ridged top that you're going to lie against the underside of your flower. And the first couple stitches might be a bit fiddly, so just go with it. Take your needle, come through, so here's the little eye in your bobby pin, come through it, and then just pick up a little stitch on the bottom of the petal, and tug tightly, come through the eye of the bobby pin once more, and just pick up another stitch on the bottom of the petal. Now, this is where it gets a little easier. Spin it around, and you're going to take your string, and you're just going to pull it through between the prongs of the bobby pin, and pick up a stitch under the flower. And take your yarn, pull it through the prongs of your pin, and pick up a stitch underneath your flower through the prongs, pick up a stitch, remember to keep it nice and tight, and through the prongs. And you're going to do this all the way along for, you know, maybe 10 or 12 stitches, till you get to across the middle of the bottom of the flower, and to about the middle of the opposite petal. You don't have to do too many stitches. This is not going to take that much wear and tear going into your hair. And once you've got a comfortable number of stitches done, make sure I'm going to the center here. Put in one more. Then I'm going to turn it around again so that I'm looking at sort of the the bottom side, you can see where some of my stitches are. I'm just going to knot my thread 
two times. Oops, come here. In the same place. There we go. And just weave it in. Go back and forth a couple times just so I know it's not going to come out. Oops. There we go. And trim your thread. And there you go. And you can see that it's only attached to the top part of your bobby pin. So when you go to put it in, you can still split it apart just like you would and then slide it into your hair. And a really great trick for all bobby pins, especially bobby pins that you sew something onto, have a single bobby pin, so a plain one, hanging around. And after you've put the bobby pin that's decorated into your hair, take another bobby pin and slide it through your hair and across the other bobby pin like this. This locks your bobby pin into place in your hair and your pretty little flowers won't come out. <laughs> there! And there you go! That's how you make a quick little hair clip with a flower and some beads, if you like. Anyway, um, if I mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again. A great way to keep these sorts of clips in your hair. So whatever you make and whatever you sew onto your bobby pins, the best way to keep them in your hair, especially if you have thicker hair, is to use another bobby pin. Take that second bobby pin and just run it over top of the one that you've already stuck into your hair. So you kind of bisect the one that you've got in your hair and it locks it into place. And that's a hair salon trick that my sister-in-law taught me. Anyway, that is all you need in order to have super cute little clips that will stay in your hair all day and they are totally unique. You can make them personalized, you can make them to match any outfit, and so on and so on and so on. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. We really appreciate you posting pictures. Lots of you have been doing that lately and we think it's awesome. So please keep doing that uh, anywhere you like. Google+, Facebook, Instagram. I'm there at Jaden Stitches and you can find me. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again really, really soon. Bye. <laughs> I love these things.